Now at the end of the last video, we finished by asking the million dollar technology question. And that million dollar technology question was, what should our company do in order to deal with the rapid technological developments occurring in industry today? In other words, what should our digitalization strategy be? Well, to help answer that question, we need to consider a few important points. And the most important point is to think about how likely it might be that that will happen. In other words, how likely might it be that new technologies will disrupt our current businesses and markets? By disruption, we mean an innovation that creates a new market and value network and eventually disrupts our existing market and value network. And by doing that, it displaces or replaces us and other companies, existing products or networks of companies in an industry. Please remember that it's vital for a company to understand, especially before it happens, if the technology out there might disrupt their market and why it might happen. Well, in fact, there are two primary reasons why this might happen to your business. And the first of those reasons is that digitalization is creating new markets. And because this is occurring, when new suppliers find cheaper and easier ways of doing things which mate unmet demand in the marketplace, on this point, it's important to realize that companies like us at the moment are mostly serving customers who are most attractive for our particular business. And that means a large share of the potential market, and I emphasize the word potential, is not being served by existing suppliers. And that gap represents a great opportunity for companies who are disrupting markets. But the second point and a more dangerous disruption which can occur is when disruptors can improve products or services through technology. For example, a disruptive competitor might virtualize the supply of a product. Amazon is a good example of this. Or a disruptive competitor might automate the existing manual processes of the business. And here Uber and their app is a good example of that. Or a disruptive competitor might do more of the work for customers because they have better connectivity and information. Google is a great example of this in the educational field. There are many, many other examples. But according to McKinsey and Company, companies should also become aware of some of the danger signs before they are disrupted. And those danger signs might suggest that your business is ripe for disruption. Some of those danger signs might include if better information or social media could greatly improve the product or service you're currently offering, or if your physical products, for example, a light bulb or a thermostat, is not yet connected to other devices or systems, and if there's a gap between the point of when the customer purchases your product or service and the time they receive it or it's delivered. And finally, if customers have to physically go and get your product or service, like groceries is a good example here. And an interesting uh, practical example of this is the Amazon Dash Button. The Dash Button is a Wi-Fi connected device that reorders your favorite product with just the press of a button through the Amazon app. The way the dash button works is that you simply set it up close to where the product you wish to reorder is kept. For example, your washing detergent in the closet. When you notice you're running out of that product, you simply push the button and the product automatically reorders the washing detergent for you on Amazon. Okay, maybe you think that someone else could push the button all the time, just after you do, but Amazon thought about that because the dash button responds only to your first press until your order is delivered, regardless of how many times dash button is pressed. And you receive the, 
and notification for every order placed and that allows you to cancel an order before it's shipped, etc. So the dash button is a great example of customers not having to physically go and get their products and services from a normal food store, etc. And finally, the danger of disruption can also be increased because other companies have identified ways to change the way customers pay for their products or services. In other words, disruptive competitors have figured out a way to get someone else to pay for the cost of their doing the business. And a great example here is that all of us get YouTube, Google, Facebook, SoundCloud, and other online services free. But have you ever wondered who's paying for those services? So we might say that for every business, it's necessary for them to consider what actions they might need to take to manage potential digital disruption of their business. And those actions will depend on the level of threat for each individual company and how they interpret those threats. But please remember that based on the findings of the McKinsey research we discussed a moment ago, the vast majority of companies today are not prepared for the move to digital business models, including online products, sales and service. And that will begin to dominate the revenue potential of many companies within the next five years. And more than four out of five companies, or over 80%, do not have the necessary skills and talent to execute the necessary transformation to deal with that. So, so one could say that disruption will certainly be part of the future and that many companies are not prepared and they don't have the necessary skills to deal with that threat. And this means that you should make sure that any company you're managing in the future is not unprepared. So what are the three most important lessons we should leave this session with? Lesson number one is that almost every business is now becoming a technology business and the fact will have a big impact on how those businesses operate in the future. The second lesson we can take away from this session is that according to the research out there by McKinsey and Forrester and Nielsen and others, only 27% of companies have a logical digital strategy that clearly sets out how they will create customer value as a digital business in the future. And this means that more than 70% of companies don't have a digitalization strategy. And the third most important lesson is that companies must be aware of the danger signs, the weak and strong signals that might suggest their business is ripe for disruption. Those signs might include Could information or social media greatly improve your product or service? Are your physical products connected to your devices, etc.? Is there a gap between the point when the customer purchases your product or service and the time they receive it? And finally, do your customers have to physically go and get your product or service?